Yeah. Okay. I don't care. Hey, we're live. Let's share it to the places. Yeah, you and I aren't going to record tomorrow. No, I'm good. Why is it? Hold on. My, uh... Why has it got me freaking weird? Okay. Uh, not that I've been watching, I've been too busy. I figured, I mean, it's going to start before we get through our, you know, what have you been up to, what have I been up to, so we might not even talk about that until uh, sometime. So it was pretty fast and loose with the notes. Um, this is a different kind of show. I have to check something on our channel. Um, there's Geek Grill. Am I live yet? Because um, I've got the YouTube channel where it's going to play that you sent me is playing in my ear already. I theoretically have it turned down so it's not feeding into the stream yet and I'll have to turn it up when we want it going there. <laughs> um, it's not what I'm seeing. The PBS NewsHour coverage of some sort. This is the YouTube link you gave me. Great. Well, that's not what's in our feed. So. That makes sense. Let me... Yep. All right, let me try to fix the link I have here. Yeah, 
Yeah. And he's bullied because um, his name is Trump. So, it, again, it's just, it, it's all about him, right? I, it's kind of, oh, poor me. <laughs> Instead of somebody actually, you know, I don't know, I just, it's kind of stupid. What the hell? All right, let me... Okay, this is the right footage. I, I know. Doesn't matter what you're saying. <laughs> Matters what I'm trying to get our streamers. Okay. Yeah, um it's showing now. So Alright, let me turn the audio back on for our listeners. Not that it's very exciting. No, it's just no sound whatsoever right now. Okay. Well, that's good, because we're talking. I guess let's get this show on the road. All right. So I'll let you start, because this is your show. <laughs> it is. Thank you. Um, <laughs> hello, and welcome to episode 123 of Geek Grills. The Geek Grills podcast is supported primarily by our patrons. Please go to patreon.com slash grills and support us today. I am 9 of 12, and I am joined by, well, I will be joined by my co-host, the Jen, in a little bit. She's on her way home from work, um, and right now, I am joined by the Reverend Barney, who you may or may not know is on a little show called Heresy and Hearsay with me. So this will actually serve as both podcasts this week, and we're going to do live coverage of the State of the Union. If you're watching live, you see I've got my MST3K bots prepared for heckling. <laughs> I have a whole list of nicknames for uh, 45, sorry, but I don't use his name, so that's what I'm doing. Uh... This is way more political than we ever get on grills, but it's what heresy and hearsay is always about. So we're not going to be pulling punches. Go ahead and send your hate mail and troll all you want, and we'll feed you tonight, because why not? What the hell? It's got to be done. So. <laughs> so why don't you uh, tell folks a little about yourself? Hold on. I killed your video or your audio. Hold on. Sorry, go back and introduce yourself again and I'll edit that later. <laughs> okay. So go I'm Reverend Barney and you can find me on Twitter at Seth Roth II. Okay. That's uh, so I'm, I'm a really huge um, Final Fantasy fan, but it also has a religious connotation as well. You can also find myself in Ember on our podcast at Heresy and Hearsay where we're reclaiming faith through political discourse. And you can find us on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, iTunes. We have a Patreon as well for Heresy and Hearsay and at heresyandhearsay.com. I want to apologize to all of our live viewers. There's going to be a little tech difficulty here and there. Uh, Barney is in a hotel room and all listeners know how that Wi-Fi could be, and he's using his phone, but we're still having some video issues, and hey, I see the gen. Yay. Uh, I'm here, sort of. Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just lost all of it. Yeah, I don't Can know you... where your video went, Bernie. All right, and my back. Not quite yet. <laughs> well, oh, you can still hear me, so that's the important thing right now. Yes, no I can hear it. you. So. I'll move the name tags around because Jen's in your spot and you're in her spot.
And you can hear the crowd. Woo, excitement. <laughs> so my son today, um, I picked him up from school, and he's like, how was your day? I said, oh, it was okay. How was yours? He said, I learned about the designated survivor. Are you talking about the person that has to stay behind? Yep. During any political event where they they basically draw straws? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's not quite like that, but basically it's because of the 25th, right? Because somebody can't go in case somebody... In, well, my husband put it in case the Joker shows up and blows it all to hell. Yeah, so according to the 25th Amendment, there's the sequence of who would take over in the case of the resignation, removal, or death of the president. And there's a really long list of uh, everybody in that, in that order. And so one person stays away from the event so that if in the event something did happen to the event, we have to. Yep. I wonder who that is tonight. Is that, do either of you know? It's always like the secretary of something you didn't know had a secretary. I hate to say it. It's kind of like, or you didn't you know they were in line of succession, time. at least, right? So you get I mean, I mean, didn't they do a TV show about that starring Kiefer Sullivan? Uh, 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 yeah, Kiefer Sullivan. I feel like. Called hmm. yeah called designated survivor because basically because I, uh, I think like there was some terrorist attack that happened and why during the state of the union that or something to that effect and he, he and he was like the only one so he became president and that's what that show is about for like two seasons you are 100 percent correct as a lower level cabinet member tom kirkman never imagined something would happen oh look at, look at that <laughs> hilarity and i mean <laughs> well, yeah, let's hope we never have to see that actually play out. Uh, but yeah, it's usually some some lower level cabinet member. So hey everybody, that's the gen. Um, what? And and Jen, this is going to be the heresy and hearsay episode this week as well. So why don't you go ahead and give an introduce to the folks that listen to that show. And not necessarily the grills yet, and let them know who you are. Uh, yeah, I'm the Jen. I normally stream. These days I have not been uh, stream capable, uh, but soon. Uh, but I have been doing the Geek Girls podcast with Ember, and uh, we've been doing it for many, many years now. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, right? A couple years now. Yeah, it's been an adventure. I can't I still can't wait to do as long as we have been. Um, we're like 120 something episodes now. It's crazy. But, yeah, I'm Jen. That's I play video games. I'm a nerd. Um, I like politics. <laughs> I actually have a degree in politics, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, come on. I, I, I mean, <laughs> no. Um, I mean, yeah, I sort of kind of do. Right. So I'm a Blizzard fan girl, Marvel fan girl, um, and. Part of the reason why Ember and I became friends. Yeah, playing games. All so, what games. have you been up to this week, Barney? Uh, this week I've been playing Hearthstone. Um, my favorite deck right now is a hunter's deck called I Hunt Alone. I absolutely love that build because that means I don't have to worry about creatures. I just create creatures out of thin air. It's great. Um, I and that deck wins more times than it loses. I, I am also um, a fan of mage decks. I have a, right now I have a elemental deck uh, with, um, the, uh, with the, uh, uh, I'm sorry, it's playing right now in my ear, I apologize. And so um, with uh, Jaina being the Frost Queen, so that's, you know, one of, Jaina is my favorite character, so I always spend more time building up those uh, mage decks than anything else but that my i hunt alone deck is a really great deck cool. 
Uh, as a side note, I'm gonna. Beep, 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 beep. Uh, apparently, Trump's situation of having multiple secretaries actually complicated the designated survivor the designation for this event. Joint so literally two minutes ago, they announced order. that it was actually Energy Secretary oh and gosh. former Texas Governor Rick Perry. Oh my God! <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> Which just brought to mind. The chair appoints Jen, as members of the committee the link we're using on the part of the House the YouTube to escort the president of the Yeah, United I was going to say, I'm currently, I think, on the CBS the News, but I would, Maryland, let me get Mr. to the PDF. Hoyer, the gentleman from South Carolina, the Mr. Hoyer, the, the, the gentleman from oh, yeah. Mexico, Mr. <laughs> Lujan, the gentleman from yep, New York, I, Mr. Jeffries, the gentlewoman from Massachusetts, Ms. Clark, did you guys the talk about Illinois, the Bustos, the reinvitation? The woman from California, Miss. We Hill. have not. We haven't really talked about anything yet because we. The gentleman took us from California, Mr. McCarthy. <laughs> because we're just the now starting. From Louisiana, <laughs> Mr. Scalise, yeah, we're just now starting. Yeah, I'm in a hotel Wyoming, room, so Cheney, like I have really, I'm using cell service right now, Mr. so <laughs> I'm the using my from data. Alabama, but Mr. Palmer, I, I mentioned a little bit on heresy last week because it's so like. Treating him like the Missouri, child he behaves like. Just I, mean, I feel like. I, I feel like. Well, part of it is like really the security. I, I do think the security the concern Senate, is worthwhile reason to make a change. And, and of course, everybody is like, oh, well, this is a political Senate play. And I'm like, or it's a play to make sure that nothing terrible happens. How about that? That's also a thing. Senator from Iowa. Mr. This Grassley. is actually technically, Senator from I Wyoming, invite you to come do Mr. this, Barassa. asshole. You don't Senator just Senator from Missouri, Mr. Blunt. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Senator because the three Iowa, branches are actually Ms. separate, Ernest. and this is basically Senator the big deal Indiana, is. It's the, it's the time when Senator the executive York, branch is uh, invited to Senator leave the West Illinois, Wing of the White House Mr. and Durbin, head down to the Capitol, the and it's one of those Mrs. times. Murray. Did Senator they do it professional? Michigan, Did I miss it? Where they all start walking in and everybody the like from waves and it's the guys Warren, walking into the. Oh, the senator from Minnesota, Miss Klobuchar, and the senator call. from Wisconsin, Miss Baldwin. Our uh, socialist heroine. <laughs> oh, here's the president. Oh, there's our president. Ugh. Sorry, okay. those words are rough. Members of the escort committee makes me kind of throw up in my mouth a little. Bobby doors. So, what are some of the names you have picked out for for the Phantom Menace tonight? Oh well, <laughs> I, 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 I I saved the whole list from uh, my buddy Greg Proops because I just love his take on this whole thing. Um, I haven't listened to his show in a while, but um, I got a list. You want to hear the whole list? Well, Here's as he Pepper speaks. It's... Although Rob had a good one because we put that MST3K um, thing in the stream. And so he is like, well, you have to use like uh, Bigly McLar Mc what is it? Bigly McLies Huge, which is a callback to an old original MST3K episode where there's Big McLarge Huge and Chunk McBeefsteak, where they all riff over the guy as uh, he shows up in this movie, uh, Space Mutiny. I would like to note that I am very glad that we have now much more uh, multiple options for streaming the address as a person who has not had like standard television for a while mm -hmm. now it's been really frustrating to not be able to access things like this so i'm glad it was so easy that i remember i think it was in the 2016 election that they did all the debates on or was it 2012 one of the two they did all of the debates on like xbox live where you could watch them on xbox live as well mm. um so for a while, I've, I've been like Jen, where I just watch either on my phone or, you know, with my computer or whatever, anything that I want to watch. So I'm glad that they have this as well to where you can watch it multiple ways. Well, I've always been a fan of watching on, like, C-SPAN so that I don't have... Yeah. <laughs> Ironically, because here we are doing commentary, but I don't have the commentary of just talking heads. So there's not an agenda. And if I don't catch this kind of, you know, a lot of speeches, um, I just skip and then I read the transcript. 
because it feels like an objective way to look at it. Yeah, I agree. Um, I really enjoyed uh, Barack Obama as a speaker, so any opportunity I had to listen to him speak live and watch it, it was really worthwhile to me, so it was frustrating when I didn't always get to watch those. I really, really enjoy watching him speak. And we yeah. haven't had a lot of presidents in the last 20 years or so that have that kind of a command, you know? That oh, just, he was so it's something eloquent. You, really have or, you can't teach that. Like That's just something people have or they don't. Well, it's like, and, and I know he's problematic in this day and age, but Bill Clinton could give a speech. Yes, yeah, I, 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 yeah, it's the one that comes to mind aside from that, but it is a little bit, um, uh, yeah. Yeah, I fortunately got to see Barack Obama several times, so that was quite a thing. Well, I saw him speak uh, when he was a senator, and I lived in Illinois, and he spoke at one of the universities, and uh, he told us not to get up to any shenanigans um, and go <laughs> make sure we go to class. Um, that was a, that was the first time I had really seen him, and I I don't know I never would have thought that he'd become president, but it makes sense. And then I actually walked um, several miles the day before uh, election day when uh, Obama got elected. To, in Manassas, Virginia, to hear him speak or see him speak there live the night before the election. Yeah, I, um, I started following him earlier on. I have some really good fancy transcripts I was given as a delegate. Um, that was kind of neat. <laughs> of course, there's live things. Although one of the closest ever was, um, well, other than the 2012 <laughs> delegate space in North Carolina, we got right up front because it was here. Um, I was handling the I was working to organize the volunteers at like, Hickory High School. <laughs> and so after we got all the volunteers set up, I um, went ahead and got in the media area. Well, I didn't get to shake his hand, and my son so makes fun of me because my son did. Because he got brought in later by a teacher because I couldn't pick him up from school. And they got sat right in the front row to like fill in space behind the you know the candidate at that point, who was really really late and it was hot and it took forever to get there. It was the same day he had to um, disavow his pastor. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was really hard because for folks that haven't gone to these small political venues or well small venues where it's a political event like schools, for security reasons they have to shut down the AC. And so when it takes a few extra hours for the candidate to show up, it, it's uh, quite unpleasant. So what else, uh, what have I been up to? Um, boring stuff, doing my taxes. I broke uh, Kingdom Hearts 3. All the audio, but the uh, music quit working. He was leading off with jobs. I'm actually a little bit surprised that's the first thing he talked and he's also sniffling like oh, like he's just he's also sniff he's also sniffling like he was at the debate i got to say his he actually looks nice tonight i'm actually kind of impressed i really think he has switched to a proper spray tan that or somebody finally changed the, the and his hair bulbs looks better in his booth. Well, I think what they're doing is they're actually doing the spray tan so that the eyes, it's always been those eyes. So I think he was getting real tans. I think, it, but, you know, tanning booth and stuff, but you put those little goggles to protect your eyes, so. Well, good for the makeup person. By the way, did we talk about the women wearing white tonight um, for the message? I don't know if they, they just showed that on screen, I so I just want to make sure to mention. Um, so this is... Um, so there's do dozens of uh, women in Congress are using fashion basically as a tool to uh, send a message and stand out to show solidarity, and uh, it's actually kind of cool. Excellent. Crusade, the Allied liberation of Europe in World War II. Oh. 
Okay. 1944. 15,000 young American men jumped from the sky and 60,000 more stormed in from the sea to save our civilization from tyranny. Here with us tonight are three of those incredible heroes. Private First Class, Joseph Riley, Staff Sergeant Irving Locker, and Sergeant Herman Zaitchek. And Sergeant Herman Zaitchek. Oh my gosh, these guys are very, very, very. You know what? I'm glad. Do you have to make him stand, <laughs> poor guy. <laughs> Why are you making the old man stand? Like he was waving, <laughs> just waving. <laughs> um, I just want to circle back to the the women wearing white. That's a suffra suffragette thing, by the way. Um, just historically, um, and it's about uh, women and families and um, it's the House Dem women. Uh, if you ever want to follow them on Twitter, it's House Dem women, and I really encourage you to do that. Um. They are, they've been up to uh, some interesting you. things. Gentlemen, in I salute you. Uh, we also celebrate uh, 50 years since 2019, brave young pilots, we also celebrate 50 flew years a quarter of brave a million young pilots through space. Can you, space you see me, guys? Miles on the face through space of the moon. to plant the American okay. flag. Half a century on the face late. Of the moon. We are joined by Half one of the Apollo. It just got quiet and I can't hear anything right now. <laughs> on live feed. That that it's wonderful. Buzz Aldrin. That flag, Buzz Aldrin. I really think that his hair looks the best it's looked in a long time. And I know it's silly, but that's an that's Mm, I keep streaming out. I can out. hear both of you, though. I can hear you, too, as well, so that's a plus. Bonnie, you really loud in the Thank you, Buzz. I'll talk this softer. This year, American astronauts you, will go back to space. This year, American, American astronauts rockets. will go back to space on American rockets. Rockets. <laughs> I mean, we were supposed to do it in 2006, so why not? Didn't he cut funding for NASA? Yeah, no, well, to be fair, the biggest cut, well, I'm not going to. Gordon helped with science. No. Redefine the, redefine the middle class. Transform science. And when you get down to it, there's nothing anywhere in the world that can compete with America. There's nothing anywhere in the world that can compete. With America. Germany, Finland, Sweden. So can we not redefine the middle class? Can we just not have a class system? Can we just have just don't have classes? Like I'd prefer that personally. And I would too. As a as a socialist, I, I completely agree with that. I just I I, I just feel like <laughs> boldly and bravely into the next chapter of this great American adventure. And we must create a new standard of living for the twenty first century an amazing quality of life for all of our citizens is within reach we can make our community safer our family stronger our culture richer our faith deeper and our middle class bigger and more prosperous than ever before oh, so I like the opposite of the text that i'm going with now I'm in my Anyone else I know in the middle class? I can pick it a really big group right now. Hey, I don't own a house. I'm not married and I have no kids. And I'm on a commission-based salary. Yeah. Taxes are awesome. But we must I pay a lot of them. But I would like them to go to things that I care. Resistance and like health care, free college. Health care and education would be nice. I have a mortgage uh, in the form of a student loan bill. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> Oh, there's Damn, a Damn, ocean. look at that face. <laughs> wow, that's like a sea of white. No, it's really awesome. So the idea is, is that it's almost 100 years since women got the right to vote, and so there's 
um, approximately 100 women serving in Congress. So um, that's kind of a cool. We can bridge all divisions, heal old wounds, build new coalitions, forge new solutions, and unlock the extraordinary promise of America's. Has he said anything of substance? Decision is ours to make. America is a great nation. We should luck. be a great Results nation. We should continue to be a great nation. Uh, we're America. The United States is a great nation. America. Are we getting I lost in the script or they purposely write it in his greatness. style of repeating half sentences over and over in the same ones? I do like so that, that we're going to talk about like unity. The, you know, no we well, let off with like this isn't a Republican, this isn't a Democratic agenda. This is the American agenda, unity, blah 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 blah. blah. Over the last two years, my administration has moved with urgency and has. Unless she's not leaning down, she's leaning down awkwardly. Kind of by leaders of both parties over many decades. In just over two years since the election, we have launched an unprecedented economic boom, a boom. That has rarely been seen before. There's been nothing. Okay. Like it. I'm sorry. What? 5.3 million new jobs, and importantly, added 600,000 new manufacturing jobs. Something which almost that is actually true. Was but that's because we're moving it back from other countries but back to here. Is, we are just because they're no longer as low started. labor costs anymore. I literally wrote a paper about this last night. Well, and those jobs are not providing the kind of pay and benefits <laughs> that they used to back in the day. It's not exactly a return to that kind of upward mobility that it used Wages to be. Wages are rising at the here. fastest pace in decades. Well, no, it's it's going to reinforce the blue collar worker blue -collar again. Workers. Oh my they're God! What just happened? <laughs> they're growing faster than anyone else. That was really unsettling. Nearly five million Americans have been lifted off food stamps. Because you <laughs> lifted off. Because uh, yeah, because even... we don't want to give them benefits because we can't afford it. They've been lifted off in... <laughs> <laughs> to oblivion is what. Yeah, they're now starving. Thanks. Yeah. The U.S. economy is growing almost twice as fast today as when I took office. And we are considered far and away the hottest economy anywhere in the world. Not even yeah, close. hot like terrifying. Stay away from it because nobody knows where it's headed right now. Like yeah. that? Is that what you mean? Has reached the lowest rate in over half. A That's century. because their benefits have run out, and therefore they can't file anymore and fall That's off. Right. <clears throat> I'm so lucky to have a job with benefits. I am so grateful every day. African I had to get a job with Hispanic benefits because I didn't have one, and, and I American suffered for three years untreated with a lot of stuff. Ever recorded. Because their benefits have run out. And they don't count those that drop off. Yeah. Unemployment for Americans I know with Barney was just saying that, but just to reiterate, also that's... reached an all-time low. Veterans with disabilities are at all-time low as far as benefits. That's because you cut them out, too. Oh, I feel the anger raging. ...are working now than at any time in the history of our country. 157 How hard is it to sit behind that man? And just like, well, right? if it's Pence, if it's not, Pence, no, 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 <laughs> and not make faces when he's like, it's at an all time low, and she's just like, imagine, like, and doubled the <laughs> you just like do a mantra, like, credit. water off a duck's back, like, what is There's this? There's so much more working because people <laughs> have to have three and four jobs to survive, like. That's the part of those numbers that, like, is a big goddamn deal. I know people are, like, or death tax, have degrees and they're working, as it is often you know, in retail and fast food and whatever the hell. Oh. And also yeah, my husband's like, how is Nancy going to sit there and not just Explode. flip to the bird the whole time? <laughs> I, 
We eliminated the very unpopular Obamacare individual mandate. Penalty. And that's why uh, that's why Obamacare can no longer be afforded by poor people because of the mandate is gone, which is absolutely. <sighs> and to give critically ill patients access to life saving cures, we passed and my premiums very importantly, and my right to try employer insurance that we do have in my family. <laughs> We're going down. And now they're going up again. That's because they because My without the mandate, healthy uh, healthy people don't get on health care. In a short period of time, than any other administration during its entire tenure. Oh, where's the fact check on that one? He constantly. It makes me a little well, more than a little back. crazy. To our country that our uh, Oompa Loompa oligarch Thanks to our uses so much hyperbole. In taxes and By the way, for those of you that um, are watching and like to kind of know what's being and talked about and catch it and have links that go out pretty quickly, I recommend Politico for any live States events. When I didn't have video, that's what I used to do, and they're still doing a great job on there. Gas they, they do a complete the transcript as it happens and also provide links. And I think they also do fact checking. Li yes, uh, live, live fact checking, checking. exactly. It, and it says that give critically ill patients access to life saving cures. They pass very importantly, right to try. And, now, and then the uh, time, Sarah Overmole says years, that we know of only two patients have used the right to try pathway passed in March energy. to gain access to experimental medicines. So two people, two. <laughs> wow. After 24 Highly months effective. of rapid progress, our economy is the envy of the world. Our military is the most powerful on earth. That's because most of my taxes go to the military. I was going to say, so that's where all of my money goes. <laughs> now, to be fair, I am not opposed to that. I like security. I like security, but yeah. there's a better way to do it. And it's not a wall. I know that's coming up. America is again winning each and every day. Did he day. just say that? Did he just hashtag winning us right now in the State of the Union? That really just happened? Members oh, yeah. of Congress, <laughs> the state of our union is strong. So, <laughs> channel bigly. Is that, it's big. Is that monetizing going on? It's going on from channel. It, Did you it, hear about that, Jen? You can donate to the Trump campaign and they'll scroll your name during the address. He monetized it. That and it was like so $35 and then it was $5 and then it was a bargain of the dollar. Our country is vibrant and our economy is thriving like never before. On Friday it was announced or like it did before we had a mortgage jobs last month alone yeah followed by a number expected and he, and we're still look it takes two to four years for the the stuff that a previous administration does for it to go into effect so we're still reaping the benefits of the obama thing when those and tax Obama cuts start hitting or those tax States. And raising starts hitting, then we'll it. start seeing the economy Our crash again. Wars, politics, well, especially with the state of the stock market right now. Partisan mm -hmm. scary. investigations. We're back into a boom bust thing that we were before the twenties, and you know, and beyond. From 1950 to when Reagan took office was the best because we be had such strong laws against the stock there market. There cannot be war and investigation. It just doesn't work that way. Yeah, it's, well, also, oh, just breaking the law is United not a good idea, and to it needs to be dealt with. Oh, oh. Don't this investigate. That's just gross. Of cooperation can start with finally confirming the more than 300 highly qualified nominees who are still stuck in the Senate 
in some cases, years and years waiting. Not then give home. me Merrick Garland, and then I'm cool with whatever the hell you want. Uh, how many of Obama sat in limbo? Not just, I'm talking the lower court. I, oh, God. Oh, yeah. The Senate has failed to act on these nominations, which is unfair to the nominees and very unfair to our country. I agree. Can now you go back and let's just push through the Merrick Garland election. one? I'm good. Believe it or not. Yeah. Is that a problem? We have already proven. Yeah, because the guy that they got on there. Jesus Christ. The that, that's Congress, a whole other. Both parties came together to pass unprecedented legislation to confront the opioid crisis, a sweeping new farm bill, historic VA reforms, and after four decades of rejection, we passed VA accountability so that we can finally terminate those who mistreat our wonderful veterans. Um, now, didn't it also basically... The legislation was already in the works? Like, and, and didn't it also push for privatizing the VA? Well, yeah, half of yeah, what happened ago, with the job the creation started VA. under Obama because when Obama took We're office, it was during a recession. Yeah. So that work started reform, then. It's just like when everybody done. was like, oh, Bill Clinton was responsible for the surplus. Technically, he really wasn't. He just happened to be in office when it happened. But a lot of that was from the work done beforehand. <laughs> oh, he cut so many programs. I was like really su- I was Last subject year, to the cuts. I had to quit I heard school. through friends. Well, we all know I have wonderful feelings about the Johnson. I was deeply moved. In 1997, Alice was sentenced to life in prison as a first-time nonviolent drug offender. Over the next 22 (coughs) years, are we really parading this out there? Is this like a inspiring others to choose a better path? She had a big impact on that prison population and far beyond. Alice's story underscores the disparities and unfairness that can exist in criminal sentencing and the need to remedy this total injustice. She wow. served almost. I mean, I think this is impressive. That makes me very happy. But I'm really surprised. This is not their party line. The remainder of her life. But it's good. In he June, granted her clemency, huh? I commuted Alice's sentence. When I saw Alice's beautiful family greet her at the prison gates, hugging and kissing and crying and laughing, happy, but... I knew I did something right. Alice is with us tonight and she oh. is a terrific woman the friend that terrific. reached out was Alice kanye Grace. and Car- kim kardashian west right uh. so when you're that. friends with uh, the kardashian then, then what have i been saying celebritas man it's a form of cap that's just insane. I, I like that's not. Reform. I still think it's glad One that he said sentence it. One sentence because the Kardashians asked you to is not. Alice, and crazy Kanye is not reform. Reminding us that we always have the power to shape our own destiny. Thank and here's the life. thing: it's also good PR because she's a, a person of color. Oh yeah. I, I, right I, now, at the same time, I do think that that is a, a good like image Alice's and a powerful message, and I can appreciate that portion for what it is. But you can't treat that as an effort to deal with a very, very problematic situation. That is mm-hmm. exactly. way, way bigger. I mean, think about all of if the men. If there was any policy being enacted, that would be one thing. Not this legislation reformed sentencing laws. Community that have wrongly and disproportionately but now let him make some promises and keep the them. African American community. The First Step yeah. Act gives nonviolent offenders the chance to re-enter society as productive, law-abiding citizens. Now, states across the country 
are following our lead. America is a nation that believes in redemption. We are also joined tonight by Matthew Charles from Tennessee. In 1996, at the age oh, wow. of 30, Matthew was sentenced to 35 years for selling drugs and related offenses. Over the next two decades, he completed more than 30 Bible studies, became a law clerk, and mentored many of his fellow inmates. Now Matthew is the very first person to be released from prison under the first So what step. is the first step back? I'm not uh, aware of so it. So the idea is that if it's a first time offense, and I think it has to do with like nonviolence, mm-hmm. then you have an opportunity to not go into prison, but to go through some kind of a more probationary um, situation. And I think what they're saying is that he should have been under that act. But that's what I'm saying. Is this a going you, forward? Matthew. Welcome home. One can hope because, I mean... Well, yeah, I mean, I come from California where the three strikes law is one of the most horrific now, things that could ever, it was horrendous, and, and they fi- they're finally letting people out now that marijuana is legal to people that went crisis. there for marijuana to, Congress like, get taken care of and get released over to time. a bill that will fund our government, protect our homeland, oh, oh, here we and go. secure our very dangerous <laughs> southern oh, border. Now is the time for Congress to show the world that America is committed to ending... Wasn't your wife on a limit? ...putting the ruthless coyotes, cartels, drug dealers... So should I be personally feel like that's for my protection, considering I live in Tucson? Is that for me? I wonder what horror stories he's going to trudge up about illegal, illegal immigrants. As we speak, oh, geez. large organized caravans are on the march to the United States. We have just heard that Mexican cities, in order to remove the illegal immigrants from their communities, are getting trucks and buses to bring them up to our Look at that head shake. in areas <laughs> where there is little border protection. I have ordered another oh, 3,750 troops to our southern border to prepare. And you know what? They're still separating families at the border. Onslaught. Yeah. This is a moral issue. The lawless state. Of our southern border they're coming for asylum which is legal safety, under the law and, and you are denying that of all america both international oh. and we have a moral duty yeah to ted hessen is already on it the immigration reporter many of the so-called the caravan migrants who recently arrived in northern mexico and tend to seek asylum lawfully in the u.s according to media reports a separate caravan that provoked Trump's ire in the today, run-up to November's midterm elections did clash with the Amer- Mexican authorities when crossing into that country from Guatemala, but much of its travel was... ...enrich our nation and strengthen our society in countless ways. Who, why do they keep showing her? Who is she? Hmm. I want people to come into our country in the largest numbers. Lots of talk about the fact that the First Step Act is a part of uh, more legislative intentions and other package to come for 2019 uh, having to do with reform of uh, the justice or the criminal justice system. Um, And uh, as you can imagine, it's the most popular thing, one of the most popular things that Trump has ever pushed. Our very dangerous southern border, out of love and devotion to our fellow citizens and to our country. No issue better illustrates the divide between America's working class and America's political class 
then can we just not have different classes wealthy politicians yeah. and donors <laughs> push for open and it's oh, we have talked about this ab nauseum on our show walls and, 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 and guards great Meanwhile, working class Americans are left to pay the oh, price for Ill mass illegal immigration. Immigration is down and it's jobs, down to the lowest in 26 wages, years. Overburdened schools, hospitals that are so crowded you can't get in, increased I just crime, can't figure out if that's, if that's Gillibrand or not that they keep flashing net. to. Tolerance for illegal Why would you be standing up for that stuff? It's not compassionate. It is actually very cruel. One in three women is sexually assaulted on the long journey north. Smugglers use migrant children as human pawns to exploit our laws and gain access to our country. Human traffickers and sex traffickers take advantage of the wide open areas between our ports of entry to smuggle thousands. I feel like there are so many euphemisms right now that I can't oh, even take this seriously. I, I just I can't handle it right twisted. now. I'm <laughs> trying not to, oh, but I feel like there's slavery. so many word choices here that are Tens so delicious. Oh, I am so angry. By oh, it's so fucking crisp. our border. Are because they're the stuff into that our cities, works? Oh including meth, God. heroin, cocaine, and fentanyl. Oh, Jesus Christ. Saturday He's talking about MS-13. MS oh, my God. Now operates in at least 20 different American states. And they almost all come through our southern border. What? Just yesterday, an MS-13 yeah. gang member was taken into custody for a fatal shooting on a subway platform in New York City. We are removing these You're removing members family by members the by the thousands. By but You're removing mothers and children border, by ICE. You're not doing to anything to gang members because right they are dangerous in. and your ICE members won't go after you. After year, I mean, can we talk about the number of women that are sexually assaulted just in the U.S. already? Illegal. Aliens. Right. Like, and can't get help. To know many Can we talk about the the number of women in the U.S. that are that are sexually no that sexually that trafficked here in the states or are sent abroad? That is more that than them coming and bringing women here. here tonight oh no! Is Deborah Bissell? Just three weeks ago, Deborah's parents, Gerald and Sharon, were burglarized. And shot to death in their arena. Thanks, Ted Hassan. I'm happy. He's on point right now. Mexican alien. cartels typically transport drugs over the border through ports of entry, according to 2015 threat assessment by the Drug Enforcement Administration. Uh, a similar DEA report last year found that almost all heroin seized by border officials tonight, came through ports of entry. The DEA Sharon's said high purity fentanyl, a synthetic opioid, blah, 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 blah tends to come directly Madison. from China. To Deborah, Heather Madison. Please stand. Few can understand your pain. I am sorry that she Thank lost family members. Thank you very much. I am sorry with all of my soul that she lost her parents. By the way, I heard about you know, this because my mother was in There's an interesting Henry. fact. Has there been more killings and brutalizings by border agents of people than there have by, like, all immigrants, let alone illegal like, immigrants that have caught? Oh, yeah. I will never forget. And I saw an article about it. I was like, I, I need to verify this. And I kept looking. And, yeah. Of Gerald and Sharon. That it should never happen again. Not one more American life should be lost. 
because our nation failed to control its How about we control the guns border. that are in this nation that the causes them to be able to do this shit? I was going to say, there's the reason that my family that lives in Reno, Nevada, all have weapons arrests. in their homes, and that's because of everybody else has weapons in their homes. Including those charged or convicted of nearly 100,000 assaults. 30,000 sex We all know how I, I, I let's talk about the time that killing I was the murders. target of <laughs> we are like tonight, what does that tell you <laughs> heroes ice special agent Elvin Hernandez when Elvin first off why are you politicizing that uh, an ice member we all know how much oh no that's not ice that's Department of Homeland Security don't forget, I, I'm very familiar with the Department of Homeland Security Drug Enforcement <laughs> Division. <laughs> Little too familiar. I don't, I don't know, Tori, we'll have to hear it another he time. He legally immigrated to the United States from the Dominican Republic. At the age of eight, Elvin told his dad he wanted to become a special agent. Today, he leads investigations into the scourge of international sex trafficking. Elvin says that if I can make sure these young girls get their justice, I've really done my job. Thanks to his work and that of his incredible colleagues, more than 300 women and girls have been rescued from the horror. More than 300? terrible situation we've disrupted thousands of families 1, tens of thousands of families have been put behind and and here's cars. the thing he started that is already happening in the Sorry. that's what okay. no what i'm what now are those cases from people in the u.s doing this or are these cases of people you know illegal immigrants that's my question and there's not an answer for that because he didn't say that. He just I mean, said don't get me wrong. I want every single man, woman, and child to be safe. Like that is that is the reason why you have government, so that you have an opportunity to come together and be safe and have your right to pursue your life and whatnot. But come on. My administration has sent to Congress a common-sense proposal to end the crisis on the southern border. It includes humanitarian assistance, more law enforcement, drug detection at our ports, closing loopholes that enable child smuggling, and plans for a new physical barrier or wall to secure the vast areas between our ports of entry. In the past, most of the people in this room voted for a wall, but the proper wall never got built. I will get it built. What is that? I live in a, maybe it's because I live in a, like a border area, you know, that I, I just, I listen to this and I'm just, I've driven through our, I mean, literally, it's like, oh, okay, white chick, you exist, this is cool, a bye. Smart, like, strategic, what is a wall going to do? Steel barrier, not Nothing, because the wall that he's proposed, the last wall. one I saw, it they, they showed how it was easily broken and cut within like 30 seconds as having the greatest with simple tools. Not only that, there's, such, there's so many more endemic problems. It's beyond just go up, a physical wall. Crossings go way, way there's down. A, million points of data about how it doesn't work, it can't work, and different parts of the world and here. The land rights issues are ridiculous, the environmental issues. This is just not a viable solution. It's a very expensive San Diego unviable used to have solution. The most illegal border crossings but that fear, fear, country. fear and build the wall chant a strong just security wall masses and was put in it's, place. It's sad. this powerful barrier almost completely ended illegal crossings. The border city of El Paso, Texas, used to have extremely high rates of violent crime. One of the highest no. 
in the entire country and no, no. absolute percent bullshit that's just not right cities. yes <laughs> no now, that's just not accurate i i mean you want to talk about Stockton, you want to talk about places, you know, Southern California, sure, but don't talk to you about El Paso. The safest cities in our country. Simply put, walls work and walls save Holy lives. Crap. The people in that room should all be better educated on this than to clap for that lot. Look at that. There's like a sea of what of, of women so wearing white not together <laughs> compromise and reach a deal <laughs> that will truly make America safe. As we work to defend our people's safety, we must also ensure our economic resurgence continues at a rapid pace. Great no educator kids. More from Make schools safe. Economy. You want to worry yeah, about safety and security? Bring it to the schools. Provide services for mental health and other things that are needed year. so that we can continue to have citizens that are educated and stable minded and they can progress forward and help with this economic boost that you want. Wait, who are they clapping for? Oh, they're clapping for women. Yes. But that's also because women have helped themselves. It's because of things like Emily's List. That's why we have so many women in Congress now. It's yeah. not because mm. of anything that men like you him have done. It's because of that. all the things and the efforts that have been Thank going on much. for well, the last hardcore 20 awesome. years. All Americans can be proud I don't want to listen to this man take any credit for that. That we have more women in the workforce than ever before. Well, it's also because you have to have two incomes to survive in the country. And, yeah, and women, if they want to have children, they have to immediately go back to work. Unlike civilized countries like Germany or, or you know, other countries where they can spend two, one or two years with that child. Now, to be fair, this probably came from his daughter, and which is exactly fine. I don't actually century, have as many issues with her as a lot of people After Congress passed the constitutional amendment giving women the right to vote, we also have more women oh, serving in saying. Congress than He at looked at them and said before. you weren't supposed to do that. What the actual fuck? No, he wanted I mean, to just that action in itself was... Oh, and, and there's the Trump children. Where is mine? Where is mine? Oh, there she is. So we worked really hard to get cinema elected here in Arizona. The first uh, female senator in Arizona um, for bisexual woman, openly bisexual woman elected to Senate, I believe now. Yep. Not that that's why I voted for her, but... That's great. Really great. And congratulations. That's great. As part of our Oh, you did such a good job. That's nice. Oh, Is that that's really what that just was right now? We are launching the first ever <laughs> government-wide initiative focused on economic empowerment for Look women at you all dressed up and doing countries. politics. That's really what that sounded like. <laughs> that was probably the most condescending thing I've heard. You know. <laughs> to build in our incredible economic success, one priority is paramount, reversing decades of calamitous trade policies. Oh, Lord. Here we go with trade policies. We're now making it clear to China that after years of targeting our industries and stealing our intellectual property, the theft of American jobs and wealth has come to an end.
Therefore, we recently imposed tariffs on $250 billion of Chinese goods, and now our Treasury is receiving billions and billions of dollars. But I don't blame China for taking advantage of us. I blame our leaders and representatives for allowing this travesty to happen. I have great respect for President Xi, and we are now working on a new trade deal with China. But it must include real oh, there's Linda McMahon. cultural change to end unfair trade practices, reduce our chronic trade deficit, and protect American jobs. I don't know how much more to can take. She's looking she's looking rough. <laughs> Another historic trade blunder was the catastrophe known as NAFTA. Oh, no, NAFTA was stupid. I have met the men and women of Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Indiana, New Hampshire, and many other states whose dreams were shattered by the signing of NAFTA. For years, politicians promised them they would renegotiate for a better deal. But no one ever tried until now. Not true. Actually, wrong. The U.S., not, Mexico, no. Canada just, agreement, just, just the U.S. Not accurate. <laughs> will replace NAFTA and deliver for American workers like they haven't had delivered to for a long time. I hope you can pass the USMCA into law so that we can bring back and this one's our manufacturing not that different. jobs in even greater numbers. Expand No, American but I think it actually weakens some protections if I remember property, if I think about it. And ensure that so that American factories can do bad things, but it's okay versus you know, go in if I remember correctly, it weakens. In the USA. So yeah, the money pouring into our treasury from the tariffs is from American companies, by the way. Well, it, not, not just China. that. Yeah, it's, <laughs> most economists highlight that extra revenue is paid for by American companies importing Tonight, Chinese products into the United States. Plus, China has retaliated with tariffs of $110 million worth of U.S. goods, such as pork and whiskey. So that if another country places an unfair tariff on an American product, we can charge them the exact same tariff on the exact same product that they sell to us. Which is a no. <laughs> Can you math, bro? That's Both parties should be able to unite for a great rebuilding of America's crumbling infrastructure. Oh, yeah. Not we fair different. trade. Fucking fair trade. People learn how to negotiate. Now it's all bad deal, good deal. I'm trying to take advantage of you, and that's I think the danger of this like I know that business and president same an thing. Bill. Bullshit. That's not and how I it works. And I am eager to work with you on legislation to deliver new and important infrastructure investment, including investments in the cutting edge industries of the future. Isn't those all this private an instead option. of it being government? This is a necessity. The next major priority for me and for all of us should be to lower the cost of health care and prescription drugs and to protect patients with pre-existing conditions. Isn't that called Medicare for all at that point? I mean, wouldn't that just solve the problem? Medicare for all? I'm just, yeah. Free health care, free medicines. Already as a result of my administration's efforts in 2018, drug prices experienced their single largest decline in 46 years. That's why it cost $1,000 to buy an EpiPen. I was going to say, and how much, is, like, is he just going to take credit for everything? We must do more. It's unacceptable that Americans well, yeah. pay vastly Kinda more than does. people <laughs> in countries for the exact same drugs. Yeah, this is why I don't listen to this crap most of the time. It's in hard. the exact same place. This is wrong. This is unfair. 
and together some of that decline had to do with the fact that we had a shady douchebag that finally got put to fucking task for drug price like But how long did people let that, you know, that problem go on, you know? I'm asking Just, Congress okay. to pass legislation that finally takes on the problem of global freeloading and delivers fairness and price transparency for American patients, finally. What is freeloading? Um, we should also hold, hold require on. drug companies insurance companies and hospitals to disclose real prices to force drug prices haven't dropped price increases have slowed way down and it's hard to say what's driving that price hearts also leveled in 2007 2012 and those proved temporary no force in history has done more to advance the human condition than American freedom. In recent years, we've destabilized the entire Middle East. <laughs> That's what we've done in the <laughs> recent. In recent years, we have made remarkable progress in the fight against HIV and AIDS. Scientific breakthroughs have brought a once distant dream within reach. My budget will ask Democrats and Republicans to make the needed commitment to eliminate the HIV epidemic in the United States within 10 years. We have made incredible strides, incredible. I hope that's true. I really do. Together I we mean, will I defeat hope so. AIDS in America and beyond. There's a handful of things here that surprisingly the Democrats have backed. Tonight so. I am also asking you to join me in another fight that all Americans can get behind. The fight against childhood cancer. <laughs> what? Childhood cancer. Is he implying someone's for it? I, I, I think I'm missing. Yeah, I'm for Joining childhood Melania cancer. I think all kids should get totes, cancer. I'm totes cool <laughs> kids not getting cancer. Ten-year-old girl, Grace Eline. This is literally just like, Every let me birthday. parade. Like, this is the weird... This is, am mm -hmm. I... It, no. No, you're right. This is like parading the sick. The, 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 I don't remember State of the Union's being like this. Now, to be fair, I have generally avoided his because I just can't stomach it. So I just don't watch them. I just read them later. But, I, I mean, yeah, you have a couple mention, mention somebody honorary, Every but that's not what this is about. It's not the, I guess maybe it is. It's the parade, the to parade. To St. Jude's Children's Hospital. They Lots of presidents, she several presidents one day have she used, might like people like that. Be a they they invite because they only get a handful of invites. And they use them in their narrative. A couple, a couple. Are, this is like a lot. <laughs> immediately, she began radiation treatment. At the same time, she rallied. Well, they're the very community and raised more than forty thousand uh, dollars. Heart stringy. They're not for the fight against no. cancer. It's so that we can't completely hate him in his speech. Well, yeah, because he's talking about all of this over here, and this is my agenda, but let me parade these people over here and make you feel sad for what happened to them, or feel good about... And by the way, I want to say for childhood cancer, yeah, for those people who think I would no, not. Fall, <laughs> her doctors and nurses cheered. They loved her. They still love her. With tears in their eyes... As she I mean, it'd be kind of shitty if they didn't love her anymore. That That'd be weird. It would be totally oh, yeah. weird. Chemo. Interesting. 
she's she's just happy, you know, and I'm glad for her. You know, don't get me. She is. I just want to know Thank how we're going to work on this HIV/AIDS situation when you can't even talk about condoms in schools. Just say it. Many yeah. Childhood cancer. That that was, have not I didn't want to bring that up while we were talking decades. about childhood cancer, but it's My apparently it's been bringing Congress me on this for longer than I thought. million dollars over the next ten years to fund this critical life-saving well, research. Ban fetal tissue research, which we need for the vaccine. The oh, yeah, are we going to actually, does this mean that we're going to let them actually children. look at stem cells that aren't even controversial and uh, actually allow the research that needs to happen to happen? Oh, is that what we're going to do? Cool. That, that would be too much science. I am also proud to be the first. No, no, it's going to be thoughts and prayers. Include in my budget a plan for nationwide paid no, things, family leave. I want leave. those things to happen. So that every new there are absolutely things happening. To bond but that's that exactly it. Yeah. Their newborn child. <laughs> really? That would be. Something. That'd be Ivanka. That'd be Ivanka's there could push. Be no greater contrast to the beautiful image. Absolutely true. Of a mother holding her infant child. I have to say, I, I everybody gets mad saw, at me for this, but she's done a lot of good work in her time, and she's spent a lot well, of money and a lot of time and a lot of effort with on some things that I am on very, the very about. Of legislation that would allow a baby to be ripped from the mother's womb moments from birth. These are living, feeling, beautiful babies who will never get the chance to share their love and their dreams with the world. And then we had the case... It's already illegal. In oh, where he stated he would execute yeah. a baby after birth. I can't believe you went right from how to crappy our FMLA is and fixing it to this of every shit. person, I am asking Congress to pass legislation Oh, oh, really? You have to focus on that? That guy? Abortion of children who can feel pain in a mother's womb. Okay. I'm going to let you two handle this one. <laughs> I just want to understand why we have to have this conversation. You're like, oh, paid family leave. That's something that's very important. Also, uh, something that's illegal. Let's talk about that. Like it's happening, you know, every life. on every freaking clinic in the nation all right. the time. It's 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 a play on fears. It's uh, and it's that further dividing. He was going to talk about unity, and then he does this. Let's talk about something that's already illegal. Uh, Ripped from their womb moments before birth. Mm. It's called a fucking C-section. No, yeah, exactly. It's not. A, it's that's not shit. a fucking abortion, you asshole. Truth. Like, come all children, born and unborn, are and made. Then, you know, you can't do that. The oh, let the mother die. Then we don't have to pay the family medical the leave. Is that your idea? You fucked hard. Oh my God, agenda so. is to protect American security. Over the last two years, we have begun to fully rebuild the United States military with $700 billion last year and $716 billion, 700 billion. this year. We are also getting other nations oh to pay their fair share. Finally. Oh, is he on that again? War machines. Well, yeah. He didn't get his parade, so. It's the military didn't want to do it. For years, the United States. So apparently, he's going after the evangelical voters and moderates. My friend, yeah. says this is what this whole abortion bullshit is about. That makes Members of NATO. But now we have secured, over the last couple of years, more than $100 billion of increase in defense spending from our NATO allies. They said it couldn't be done. That's because they're afraid of Russia because you're in the pocket. Oh, I'm sorry. 
I mean, to be fair, he brought up the Virginia governor, and like, yeah, he's he's in a rough spot over that shit. But that's not what this is about. That's not administration. We will never apologize for advancing America's interests. For example, decades ago, the oh, United Star States Wars entered again. into a treaty with I Russia, seriously fucking in which feel we like agreed to limit got... and reduce our missile capability. I am so triggered. I'm well, sorry. We I really, the really agreement am. And the like, this is why I can't to the fucking letter. even play Fallout. Because Russia I grew up with this nuclear threat. <laughs> and now we're terms. abandoning those treaters and treaties and talking about it. Missile defense that is system why like I Reagan. announced that the United States I did not want my kids to have to withdrawing from the intermediate range nuclear forces treaty just wonder when someone's going to push the button treaty perhaps wait wait where we're from the Whoa. oh Whoa. who's clapping for that Getting out of the... Why do we need more we nuclear really no weapons? Choice. Oh, my God. So Perhaps we can build this fucking hotel in Moscow. Negotiate a different agreement, adding China and others. Or perhaps we can't. In which case, we will outspend and out-innovate all others by far. Oh, we're starting a new Cold War. That's absolutely wonderful. I, I already exactly. want to talk about the international ramifications of these conversations. As part of a bold new diplomacy, we continue our historic push for peace on the Korean Peninsula. Putin's already Peninsula. announced that our well, hostages stuff have come home. Again now because they're suspending Nuclear that Nuclear testing has stopped, and there has not been a missile launch in more than 15 months. We are seriously going to end up in a fucking arms race because of this of asshole. States, we would yeah. right now, in my opinion, be in a major war with North Korea. Oh, you've got to be. It's North Korea. They're fucking starving to death. <laughs> I dropped my lighter. I am so upset. <laughs> my relationship with Kim Jong-un is a good one. Chairman Kim and I will meet the Little Rocket Man again on we know February twenty seventh and twenty eighth in Vietnam. Oh my God! Okay. Yeah, is it over? <laughs> Sorry, I'm really upset. <laughs> Two weeks ago, the United States officially recognized the legitimate government of Venezuela and its new president, Juan Guaido. Oh, there's the. There's a. He's a dictator. That's great. We stand with the Venezuelan people in their noble quest for freedom, and we condemn the brutality of the Maduro regime, whose socialist policies have turned that nation from being the wealthiest in South America into a state of abject poverty and despair. Well, bro, have you actually studied Latin American history? Here in the United States, we are alarmed by the new calls to adopt socialism in our country. They're going to show her right now, aren't they? America was founded on yes, liberty socialism. and independence and not government coercion, domination, and control. That's not what socialism free, is. And we will oh. free. You mean liberty and independence like socialism? Yeah. Uh, liberty and independence, not government coercion, domination, and control. That I is, mean... Yeah. And you know who they show? They show Bernie Sanders. Oh man, really? Tonight, How about like John Stuart Mill? Is that something wrong with that? You got a problem with that? America I'm okay will with never it. Never be a socialist country. He understands that there's a difference between tyrannical fascist and no, he's a fascist. Remember that. So you know. <laughs> I mean, 
One of really? the most this is that red scare set shit. of challenges we face this is and have for many years such a repeat is in the Middle East. Our approach is based on principle realism. Yes, socialism did for this country the New Deal that have saved it for decades to yield progress. For this reason, my administration recognized the true capital of Israel and proudly opened the American embassy. Here we go. Oh. Nicolas Maduro's opponents say his regime failed because it runs more like a corrupt narco mafia state. Exactly. It has yes. nothing to do with social. Oh, look, they're showing Jared while, while they're talking about Jerusalem as the real capital of Israel. Our brave oh, well, let's just blow up the Middle East while we're at it. fighting in the Middle East for almost 19 years in Afghanistan and Iraq. His tactics are so Nearly 7,000 American heroes have given their lives. More than 52,000 Americans have been badly wounded. Cut to the guy that's got an injury that we can see on TV. Cut to him, please. Thanks. In fighting wars in the <laughs> Middle East. As a candidate for president, I loudly pledged a new approach. Great nations do not fight endless wars. <laughs> I'm glad that somebody said it. Afghanistan is not in the Middle East. Um, Right? <laughs> it, it, it's it's in Asia, and we should not be having, you should never have a fight Where a land war us? in Asia. ISIS controlled more than 20,000 square miles in Iraq and Syria just two years ago. Today, we have liberated virtually all of the territory from the We haven't done anything. These bloodthirsty monsters. Now, it was the Iraqi troops that to destroy the yeah, we, we had support ISIS. troops there. I, I know we did, but they were support. They, Syria, it was mostly the Iraqi. A warm welcome home. Of strategic targets, but I have Obama also was doing that. accelerated our As negotiations well. to reach, if possible, a political settlement in Afghanistan, which is still not in the Middle East. Side. Just if you were. We're just joining. Yeah, in case you forgot, still not the Middle East. Negotiate. Our troops have fought with unmatched valor, and thanks to their bravery, we are now able to pursue a possible political solution. And I'm sorry, I get I get real heated when it comes to South America. I like South American. I I was an international politics major. Best specifically Eastern Europe and South America were my were my focuses, my focus. So I get really upset when people In start throwing stuff around like they understand. The is holding constructive talks with a number of Afghan groups, including the Taliban. As we make progress in these negotiations, we will be able to reduce our troops. They're negotiating with the Taliban. He just said that. Taliban. Fuck it. Bernie's a socialist, so we should string him out, but let's go have negotiations with the Taliban. Totes. It all makes sense now. We'll achieve an agreement. But we do know that after two decades I mean, of war, you should I talk to everybody and try to fix this shit, to but at least they... Try. Wanted to hang the Obama for that. Like Literally, there were the, same the most ugliest ads, right? Mm -hmm. About negotiating with terrorists just for meeting with foreign leaders. <laughs> and now he's going to actually negotiate with the Above Taliban. all, friend okay. and foe alike must never doubt this nation's power and will Hypocrites. to defend our people. 18 years ago, Violent terrorists attacked the USS Cole, and last month, American forces killed one of the leaders of that attack. Yeah. Haven't we killed multiple leaders? Yeah. Now we're back in the drum beating. Fear, fear, fear. Mm -hmm. 
and then there should be maybe one more. We are honored to be joined to tonight by Tom a Wibberley. Here. Imagine that. Whose son, Wait. Navy Seaman Craig Wibberley, was one of the 17 oh, sailors. There you go. There's the feel good for the. We tragically in lost. It. Tom, we vow to always remember the heroes of the USS Cole. Thank you, Tom. Oh, that's a short one. Apparently, he's not as attractive as the other, the daughters and the granddaughters, and then the adorable child that has, that is a survivor. And my administration has acted decisively to confront the world's leading state sponsor of terror, the radical regime in Iran. The NRA? It is a radical regime. Right. They do bad, bad things. To ensure this... They do bad things. Bad, dictatorship bad. never acquires nuclear weapons. I withdrew the United States oh, no. from the disastrous Iran nuclear deal. Oh, oh that was so stupid of us to do it in the first place. Now he's being proud of it. Oh, God. I... And last fall, we put in place the toughest sanctions ever imposed by us on a country. We will not avert our... To Russia? We can't get inspectors in there anymore or mm -hmm. anything that was America keeping them from further and developing. threatens genocide but, uh, against the Jewish people. We must never ignore the vile poison of anti-Semitism or those who spread its venomous creed. With one voice, we must confront this hatred anywhere. Can we confront hatred against any people? Just like, months ago, just all of them. Eleven Jewish yeah, Americans all of them. were viciously murdered in an anti-Semitic attack on the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh. SWAT officer Timothy Matson raced into the gunfire and was shot seven times chasing down the killer. And he was very successful. Who was a white supremacist? Timothy has just had his 12th surgery, and he's going in for many more. But he made the trip to be here with us Tonight, Officer Matson, please. That is it. But yeah, I, I don't get me wrong. I am, but you can't link Iran with what happened in Pittsburgh, and that's what he's doing. Oh my God. Yeah, I mean, what happened in Pittsburgh seems a lot more directly related to the hate speech here being empowered. Mm-hmm. Duh. I mean, he quotes right-wing extremist hate groups on his Twitter, and then this happens, and he links it to why we have Iran. to go to war in Iran. Yep. Thank you. We are forever grateful. Thank you very much tonight we are also joined that's, that's by some cartwheels pittsburgh survivor judah sabbat he arrived at the synagogue as the how many times they make him began. practice that name apparently because he was nervous to say it. <laughs> the big pause <laughs> more than seven decades ago he narrowly survived the nazi concentration camps today is judah's 81st birthday. And he's stuck listening. You speak. Oh, that's that's a wonderful birthday present. Look at that smug face. Oh, my God. 
hate when he makes that face. He's like a child that's proud of his potty. Damn the gold <laughs> star. I'm sorry. It just that's the only thing I can think of. Oh, that's nice. That makes me happy. Yeah, that's a much better 81st birthday than being. Yeah. That's nice. Huh. That was pretty beautiful. What was that? He said thank you. I think he said thank you, everybody. Oh, yeah. Judah says he can still remember the exact moment nearly 75 years ago after 10 months in a concentration camp when he and his family were put on a train and told they were going to another camp. Suddenly, the train screeched to a very strong halt. A soldier appeared. Judah's family braced for the absolute worst. Then his father cried out with joy, it's the Americans, it's the Americans. <laughs> and I'm grateful. Thank you. A second Holocaust survivor who is here tonight, Joshua Kaufman, was a prisoner at Dachau. He remembers watching through a hole in the wall of a cattle car as American soldiers rolled in with tanks. To me, Joshua recalls, the American soldiers were proof that God exists and they came down from the sky. They came down from heaven. I began this evening by honoring three soldiers who fought on D-Day in the Second World War. One of them was Herman Zeitschik. But there is more to Herman's story. A year after he stormed the beaches of Normandy, Herman was one of the American soldiers nice who helped liberate Dachau. All right, I'm going to take this moment to just say uh, it has been a pleasure being here, but I have some obligations that are going to require me to vacate uh, and not be online here. Uh, so I'm going to say toodles. Um, and if you absolutely Thank you. thanks for having me on uh, on the crossover you're saying it's a crossover, <laughs> crossover. also if you want to argue with me you can go to at the gen says on twitter that just Almost go yell at me there yeah. <laughs> bye guys bye Jared. see ya in the gallery tonight seated side by side here in the home <laughs> of American freedom. Herman and Joshua, your presence this evening is very much appreciated. Thank you very much. Thank you. When American soldiers set out beneath the to remind skies us. over the English Channel in the early hours of D-Day, 1944, they were just young men of 18 and 19 hurtling on fragile landing craft toward the most momentous battle in the history of war. They did not know if they would survive the hour they did not know if they would grow old, but they knew that America had to prevail. 
Their cause was this nation and generations yet unborn. Why did they do it? They did it for America. They did it for us. Everything that has come since our triumph over communism, our giant leaps of science and discovery, our unrivaled progress towards equality and justice, all of it is possible thanks to the blood and tears and courage and vision of the Americans who came before. Think of this capital. Think of this very chamber where lawmakers before you voted to end slavery, to build the railroads and the highways, and defeat fascism, to secure civil rights, and to face down evil empires. Here tonight, we have legislators from across this magnificent republic. You have come from the rocky shores of Maine and the volcanic peaks of Hawaii, from the snowy woods of Wisconsin and the red deserts of Arizona, from the green farms of Kentucky and the golden beaches of California. Together, we represent the most extraordinary nation in all of history. What will we do with this moment? How will we be remembered? I ask the men and women of this Congress, look at the opportunities before us. Our most thrilling achievements are still ahead. Our most exciting journeys still await. Our biggest victories are still to come. We have not yet begun to dream. We must choose whether we are defined by our differences or whether we dare to transcend them. We must choose whether we squander our great inheritance or whether we proudly declare that we are Americans. We do the incredible. We defy the impossible. We conquer the unknown. This is the time to reignite the American imagination. This is the time to search for the tallest summit and set our sights on the brightest star. This is the time to rekindle the bonds of love and loyalty and memory that okay. link us together as citizens, as I think neighbors, it's safe to say he's as up. patriots. Yeah, it's safe to say that. So he didn't uh, announce a state of future, emergency. There's our that. Fate and our choice to make. Um, I am asking yeah. you to choose greatness. So no let's let's close this out. So okay. Uh, no matter yeah. the challenges right to come. Here. We must now let me close that out again. on my end. We must keep so America overall, he basically lied a lot. We must keep freedom alive. There were some good things. Our... Don't get me wrong. I would love for him to do some of those things, but how he completed certain things. Yeah, that we're going on our podcast. We will definitely have to break that down and yeah. everything. So, but. I want to thank you for inviting me onto you, uh, onto your and Jen's podcast uh, tonight to watch this. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm sorry my participation was a little uh, disjointed, but I was having technical stuff. Um, I, I made, did make sure it sounded okay in the stream, so the podcast will sound okay. But in my ears, you don't even want to know what I could hear. It was awful. I'll, for our listeners, I will go ahead and have some links in the stream including to the political inter politico.com interactives, which is really a fantastic way to, it's got the entire transcript of the State of the Union, as well as expert correspondence, comments, 
um, that were being written during it. So thanks again for joining me, Barney. Everyone, please feel free to chime in by emailing us at geekgrills at gmail.com or to Barney and I at heresyandhearsay at gmail.com. <laughs> Give me a ring at 508-474-5577. You can also tweet us at Geek Grills or at Heresy and Hearsay. Remember, you can always come watch us record live Geek Grills at twitch.tv slash Geek Grills on Tuesday evenings. The next one will be February 12th at 5.30 p.m. Barney, when's the next Heresy and Hearsay? Uh, we are going to uh, Thursday. Uh, we'll try to do Thursday. Uh, Thursday we'll have to afternoon. talk about. It. Yeah, Thursday afternoon. Our after. Twitter and our Facebook pages to get the update on that scheduling exactly. So, anyone, uh, leave us reviews on iTunes. We appreciate that. You can find me at Nine of Twelve on Twitter and Twitch. Where can people find you? You can find me at Seth Roth II on Twitter, and you can follow uh, me, and you can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, um, uh, uh, iTunes, YouTube, all of that. You'll find and the website. our <laughs> and our website uh, for Heresy and Hearsay. So, and also Patreon. And our uh, guest that's at, or our guest, our host from Geek Grills that was at Disney and unable to join us tonight, Linda, can be found on Twitch as true noob it's t-r-u-n zero zero b thanks for listening everyone good game good game and bless your heart <laughs> <laughs>